In this video, we're going to be trying to understand and assess Karl Barth's view on Revelation. To do this, we're going to look at some definitions and think about who he was and the background that he was coming from. Because when doing theology, we must understand that there are some problems before even starting. You see, theology in its essence is the study of God. We understand that when studying God who is an infinite being, we as finite creatures need Him to reveal himself to us. Take for example these glasses. Imagine that these are our lens by which we see God. The Christian worldview tells us that because of our depravity and sin, when we try to look at God through our lenses, they're broken and scratched. All the things that we use to try to understand God are distorted and broken. With revelation, we need God to come and reveal himself to us so that we may not distort him with our corrupt selves. We don't look for God, he actually reveals himself to us. But how does that revelation come about? Now there are a couple of types of revelation. Natural revelation is the things that we see around us in the world, God's creation, and we assume that these things tell us something of the character or nature of God. For example, we might look at the sunset or a stunning mountain range and take that to mean that God is a creative God. We might look at the complexity of the human eye and surmise that God is a God of detail and power. You might look at my moustache and gather that God is a God of absolute humour. This is different to what we call special revelation. Christians believe that because we are sinful and broken, we can only gather so much from general revelation because our sin distorts the rest. We need special revelation, God to reveal himself for us to truly know him. This brings us to Karl Barth. Born in Switzerland in 1886, Barth studied and worked a lot of his life in Germany through two world wars. Barth was a tough and passionate man whose commentary on the Romans launched him into the academic stage. Rumour has it that this commentary was the first to ever use an exclamation point, showing the kind of renegade guy he was for his time. Young theologian, best-selling author, and avid breakdance enthusiast Mike Bird remarks that for many Protestant theologians, Karl Barth, simply put, is modern theology, as his influence is so wide and deep in our thinking today. Barth's context is important when assessing his view on Revelation, as Barth was in a time when German theologians and philosophers were arguing that God was working through German culture and politics for the good of humanity, giving excuse and siding with the likes of Adolf Hitler. Barth, to his credit, couldn't have anything to do with, that, with his colleagues and past lecturers who endorsed the Fuhrer. Barth rejected the notion of prolegomia altogether and stated there is nothing that one does before theology. Theology or the study of God starts in the Trinity and God is revealed through this, through Scripture alone. God's revelation to humans was from vertically above and not from around. Only revelation from God can be through the Word of God. There is no room for natural or general revelation. Karl Barth argued that God is the object of God's own self-knowledge. And revelation in the Bible means a self-unveiling to humanity of the God who cannot be discovered by humans simply through their own efforts. For him, the Bible is not the revelation. Rather, it points to the revelation. Human concepts can never be considered as identical to God's revelation. And scripture is written in human language, expressing human concepts. Therefore, it cannot be considered identical with God's revelation. Now, many suggest that in the 1934 debate between Karl Barth and Emil Brunner represents a landmark in the discussion of the legitimacy, nature, and scope of natural theology. For Brunner, the starting point of any discussion of natural theology can only begin from the biblical material. While Barth refuses to use the term revelation to refer to God's disclosure through creation, preferring to speak of a natural knowledge of God instead. Barth also couldn't accept the idea 
that any knowledge of God outside of the revelation of Jesus Christ, because if we had that, then God revealing himself to through Jesus wasn't necessary. If you were to see God, you need to see Jesus and the Spirit, or according to Bart, grace itself would be compromised. Jonathan Edwards, who famously came to God when in the wilderness looking at a tree, Edwards was had the view that the glory of nature reveals the glory of God when partnered with the book of God, the Bible, that teaches about us about the book of nature, creation. One could say that this lines up with budding early noughties pop sensation, Michelle Branch, lyrics when she sung, because you're everywhere to me, and when I close my eyes, it's you I see. You're everything I know that makes me believe I'm not alone. I'm not alone. But I'll let her sing it. That's a great song. Carl Barth would not like that song. Bruna and Edwards, on the other hand, like the rest of us, should love it. Today, Barth is thought of as one of the most influential theologians of the 20th century. His work on church dogmatics is an amazing body of work, spanning four volumes and some thousands of pages. To assess his view on Revelation, one has to say for a time and what he was pushing back against, it was oh so very appropriate and bold. But it had weaknesses, including his hardline views against natural theology. If one suggests that God cannot be seen in nature whatsoever, how could then Romans 1, 19-20 condemn all mankind when it says, For what can be known about God is made plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived. Ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made, so that they are without excuse. I would see a very good case for at least some of God's presence being seen, yet ignored, in nature. To quote a good friend and budding theologian, David Horn, the notion that one must be able to read scripture to know God is all well and good when you can read. This chaining the Bible to the pulpit is the very thing that Luther's Reformation sought to destroy. I agree. The Word of God is the Word of God. Whether sitting on someone's shelf, gathering dust in the middle of nowhere, or being preached with lasers and smoke machines around Melbourne, it is just that, God's Word revealed to us. As 2 Timothy says, all Scripture is breathed and profitable for teaching and training in righteousness. This is where I think that Barth's view on Revelation needing to be the interpretation of Scripture falls down. Barth was in arguably the toughest time in human history among one of the darkest nations battling against people who were justifying Christian allegiance to some of the evilest regimes we've ever seen. His view on Revelation was more than understandable as he sought to take the prolegomia of modernity away, in fact, take away prolegomia altogether and get back to the Bible in true reformer spirit. My prayer is that we can all be a bit more like Bart. He teaches us how to cling to the word in times of the worst struggles imaginable. He promotes a healthy reverence and passion for the triune God and preach boldly every week at Basel Prison showing a love and passion for the lost. If you have a chance to read a short sermon on the fear of God from that time, it is very encouraging even to me today. So praise God for the work through this man. And that's Karl Barth. Thank you.